Monsieur Necker. Madame? Eh bien, do you come bearing good news? I found your bonds. Here they are. I don't give a fig about those bits. I'm satisfied in all I can. You may rest easy, monsieur. Your wife escaped the massacre. She returned home and left you this letter. Mon Dieu. She's going to meet our daughter and son-in-law at our charity hospital. She may already be there. Madame, I did not dare to dream of such an outcome. My wife and daughter. Can you imagine? And I thought I had lost both of them. The three of us will be able to leave the kingdom and put these horrors behind us forever. What about the bonds? Oh, the bonds. Do with them as you see fit. As long as the king does not use them. As for me, I'm going to find my family at once. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. I pray that your efforts will be successful. Adieu, madame. Adieu. Minister Necker has given his bonds to me. That's quite a nice little sum. Can you imagine? That's one-fifth of the kingdom's entire wealth. Wealth that the king squanders for his personal benefit according to his whims. Ma foi. Monsieur Necker certainly has been very generous to his adoptive country. Generous? <laughs> I have my doubts. The loan was granted at a very high rate. So high, in fact, that it would have dug the deficit into an even deeper state of abyss. Eh bien, messieurs. To what use shall we employ this boonful fortune? If I could spend it, I'd do everything I could to return to the people their confiscated freedom. To begin, I would get them the bread they so sorely need. It is only after the scourge of famine has been vanquished that armed patriots might then be able to rise up against despotism. And where will you find wheat, Robespierre? Will you steal it from under the noses of the automats who have sworn to destroy the human race? As for arming the people, this is another one of your delusions. How could your ragged pack of wretches win any sort of battle that be unable to lift a sword? When you insult the people, you insult me, Monsieur de Lafayette. I am not insulting anyone, Robespierre. But I happen to know what it takes to fight, unlike you. Monsieur, I was but a lad of 15 when I took up arms. And everyone here knows my role in the liberation of America from British rule. If you allow me to dispose of these bonds, I will found an army that will annihilate the Clockwork King's diabolical machines. As soon as I have the opportunity to leave Paris, I will rally the officers and troops that are stationed in the provinces. Then, I will call for a mass uprising. I will have more than enough money to pay their wages and procure the weapons we need. And you will have obedient troops at your beck and call, ready to repress anyone who challenges your power. These troops will only serve the will of the people. I swear it. Are you sure that the king has spared the rest of the kingdom, Monsieur le Marquis? I am almost certain of it, mon père. Despite all of his resources, the king does not have enough manpower to occupy all the garrisons in the country. Aegis, no member of this assembly can force your hand. The choice is yours. To whom will you entrust, Monsieur? Maximilien de Robespierre. I have chosen to entrust this fortune to you. Very well, madame. I promise that I will use it for one purpose only. Freedom for the people and by the people. When a monarch violates the people's most fundamental rights, insurrection is their most sacred and indispensable duty. But we must be wary of warmongers, who claim to defend our happiness. Bon sang. Am I the only one who is weary of hearing these tiresome monologues? For they wish only to silence us and take their own turn at playing tyrant. Congratulations, Aegis. You've chosen a speechifier as Commander-in-Chief. I am sure the King will be delighted to hear this. He need not fear for his throne now. Monsieur Bailly. I found this box with astronomical symbols on it. I believe it belongs to Vaucanson's daughter. Athenais's secret box. I built it with my own hands. It was my gift to her on her 15th birthday. I wasn't able to open it. Naturellement. Athenais and I are the only ones who know how. Allow me. 
You must arrange the planets the way they were aligned on the day of Atanias's birth. Voila, like this. What's this locket? Atanias is always wearing this. It contains a portrait of her late mother. She said it was her most cherished possession in all the world. To think the poor child never knew her own mother. the moment you touched the locket. I thought you were... I thought I'd lost you. I saw her. At the nice de Vaucanson. The Conde de Caliostro has her. Mon Dieu. It is just as I feared. He bound her spirit to an automat. Please, say no more. At nice. It is her spirit that animates you. Is it not? Yes. I believe so. Seigneur... Quelle abomination. It is vital that you go and find Atanias as soon as possible. She is right in front of you. I am Atanias. Alas. I fear that is not entirely accurate. You know nothing of Atanias, Ludia. Nothing of her past, her joys, her suffering. Nothing of her love for her father. You are but the vessel that harbors the poor child's soul. Where can I find Atanias's body? God only knows. Although I assume that the Comte de Cagliostro is taking pains to keep her alive, this is certainly the only way to keep her spirit alive in you. The only way to free her is to find her body. Why was Eugène de Vaucanson imprisoned in the Bastille? Once he discovered the King's true intentions, he refused to continue cooperating with him. He refused to use his talents to create this abominable army. But the king didn't take kindly to his resignation. Eugène did manage to get a letter to me just before he was arrested. Here, take it. Can I help you, Aegis? What is the significance of these objects? Nemes. I have reread every work that I have on them. These echoes go back to the beginning of time. To that fateful day. You see, Aegis, there is nothing more diabolical. The soul is the very essence of the divine. The earliest necromancers whose works have survived through the centuries. When a soul is fragmented, three shards of memory, and takes shelter in three objects that the victim held dear. It's as if the... I found this notebook written in Latin. Indeed. Medieval Latin, to be precise. Oh, hold on. Balsam. Ages, what a find. This handwriting. I would recognize it anywhere. It's in Nicholas Flamel's own hand. Give me some time to study this, and I'll tell you what I'm able to glean from it. Have you finished reading the notebook, mon père? Yes, Aegis. And what I learned from it puzzles me. In this diary, Flamel tells of three journeys. Three journeys into what he calls the in-between. A strange world filled with wandering souls. Tormented spirits that are unable to ascend to heaven. This world? It's where Cagliostro's victims were trapped until I freed them. En effet, I believe you're right. But that's not all. Flamel planned to return there a fourth time. He wrote this in the final paragraph, in his handwriting. Dated 21st of March, 1418. That was the day before he died, Aegis. 
What if his body died while his soul was traveling through limbo? What if he were trapped, a prisoner in this purgatory? Aegis, because of your unique nature, we have an incredible opportunity. What do you mean, mon père? If the soul that animates you has been bound to the automaton that serves as its vessel, then it can be separated from it too. And if this were the case, the soul would travel to purgatory. Hold on. Are you trying to convince me to go and find Nicholas Flamel? I'm offering you a chance to speak to the man who discovered the Philosopher's Stone. Assuming I agree to venture into purgatory, do I even have a chance of finding him there? Certainly. According to this journal, the soul flies to the zenith of the place where it left the body of the deceased. Or that of the pilgrim, in this case. If Flamel's soul is trapped in purgatory, as we've guessed, you'll need to go to the house- Is it still standing? Of course. You can get there via the cemetery of the Église Saint-Jacques. And how do you plan to free my spirit from this automat? We would simply need to break the bond between them. And to do this, we would need to stop your machinery. For a short time, of course. We don't want to lose you, ma chère. As for the rest, it will be a question of mechanics. Therein lies the problem. This is far beyond my comprehension. But it is fascinating, isn't it? Perhaps... Goodbye, mon père. Monsieur Raymond. Go on, Aegis. I went to the Hotel de Massiac as agreed. What I discovered goes beyond your darkest conjectures. The club's members have no intention of merely depriving their slaves of rest. Rather, with the King's support, they plan to replace them with automat harvesters. The Count of Cagliostro is behind the plan. Ma foi. But such a plan would certainly only improve the lot of these unfortunate people. You are mistaken, mon père. If the planters get their way, they will have a greater need of slaves than ever. Only this time, they intend to slaughter them to power their machines. Quelle abomination! Par tous les saints. Four days ago, the Paris Guard captured a hundred black people. They were to be sacrificed as part of an experiment to test the effectiveness of the automat harvesters. Luckily, I was able to prevent the massacre. Where are they now? In a place they call the Depot des Noirs. I don't know where it is, but I managed to get the key. It bears the inscription, Tour du Diable. The Devil's Tower is a prison in Vincennes, within the Chateau walls. That's three leagues from here. We'll only be able to free the prisoners once we're able to move freely ourselves. At least they were spared the fate that the King and his accomplices had planned for them. And what will you do with the two servants you employ, Monsieur Raymond? I will continue to treat them well, as I always have. However, under the laws you insist on following, they will become slaves again the moment they leave the kingdom for Saint-Domingue. Certainly not, Monsieur de Robespierre. What kind of a man would I be if what I have heard had not opened my eyes? The planters of Massiac have been proven to be nothing but avaricious murderers. I thought I was dealing with opposition. But now I discover them to be vile enemies, from whom it would be vain to expect any compromise. From this day on, I will fight against them and will not lay down my arms until the last slave in the Empire has been freed. Rest assured, then, that the people will fight by your side, Monsieur Raymond. That's the spirit, my friends. Vive l'égalité! Monsieur B. Do you think there is any way to interrupt my internal clockwork? A most unusual thought. What do you have in mind, Aegis? I would like to briefly sever the bond between my spirit and this automat. Hmm. It is a very strange request, madame. For what purpose do you seek to free your soul from its shell? According to the abbot. My spirit would then be able to visit Purgatory. Oh, that dreadful place. Why on earth would you want to go there? I hope to find answers to some very important questions. You must understand, madame, that your very nature is a mystery to us. We are ignorant as to the principle that imbues you with life. Nor do we know how your machinery works. 
That is why it is impossible for us to make even the slightest alteration. It would mean taking an unacceptable risk. Of course, if we had documents that could shed light on the matter... Antoine, the blueprints. What blueprints, mon ami? Ludia's. Eugène gave them to me when he was working on the modifications ordered by the king. He wanted my opinion on the potential for reducing the size of certain key parts. The documents are obsolete now, but they could tell us quite a bit about the mechanical principles that are shared by Ludia and Aegis. Bon song, you're right. Where are the blueprints now? Alas, the situation is not in our favor. I kept them in the safe at the observatory. But earlier, when I went there to collect my most important documents, before setting off for the convent, I found looters making off with its contents. Blasted scavengers. Their kind are always quick to make the most of chaos. I chased them to the keys, but was unable to apprehend them. When they disappeared into an underground passageway under the Louvre, I decided it was best not to follow them. You acted wisely, mon ami. The automats are everywhere, and the marauders don't stand much of a chance. I'll try to track them down. Fortunately, they are in perfect condition. Monsieur Bailly will be delighted.
Monsieur Bailly. Here are the blueprints you asked for. Good heavens. You found them. Your thieves were not able to profit much from their theft. They met with an unfortunate end. Oh, the poor souls. Their crimes did not deserve such a permanent ending. Certainly, certainly. Let us look at these documents now, if you will. No, Antoine, the F-wheel is not part of the cog that transfers the driving force to the escapement. Diable, you're right. It's driven by the B-wheel, and its axis is on the shaft that's visible at this point. Precisely. In fact, the shaft sits between the conical bearing and the small groove here. See? True. It's decided, then. All we would have to do is separate these two plates to disable the entire thing. And to put them back in place at the agreed time to start the machine again. You will not be able to assist me. I have to do it alone. Half a league away. You must be joking. By no means. You'll have to find another solution. Unfortunately, madame, you're asking us to do the impossible. Oh, ça, par exemple. Once your spirit is untethered from this automat, it will be impossible for you to start the machine up again. Hold on, my dear Antoine. Is this device in figure four? Is it still in place? Hmm. Yes, it is. What of it? Bon sang. It's a timer. It's primitive, true, but fully functional. The dial has marks from one to fifteen. Probably minutes. It was to allow Eugène to plan the duration of Ludia's dances in advance. Oh, I see. And by reversing the position of this peg in the center, we could instead turn it into a period of inactivity. Nous y sommes, mon ami. Fantastic. Will Aegis be able to operate this device herself? We'll make it easier for her. All you have to do is put a bolt there that she can remove when the time is right. Yes, a small iron rod will suffice. We won't have any trouble finding something that will do. When the timer dial reaches zero, the automat will come back to life. However, given the dial's fragility, we will probably get only one chance to try this. Are you sure that the bond between my soul and this machine will be re-established? Ma foi, I admit that we can't be sure of this. What do you say, mon père? Don't be afraid, Aegis. Unless I've been wrong from the beginning, your soul will seek refuge in the only body it has available to it in this world. Well then, shall we start the preparations? Let's begin. My fate is in your hands, monsieur. Voila. Everything is in place. When it's time, just pull on this metal loop to start the timer. Remember, you will have 15 minutes and no more before your spirit returns to your body. We wish you good luck, madame. Remember, to get to Rue de Montmorency, you're best going through the cemetery behind the Église Saint-Jacques in the Quartier de l'Hôtel de Ville. Here is the key to the gate. Our prayers are with you, my child.
mother of our lord, at last thou speakest! Uh. Gentle dame, you have erred here for so long, not a word uttered. <laughs> In singular contemplation of such terrible slaughter. A long time, you say? That's not possible, sir. I've just now appeared to you. Nay, but thou must trust me. And thou wast hardly alone in this symbol. There were many travellers, stiff and silent, all in agony, all bound to the anchor stone. What travellers do you speak of? The first to arrive was a sobbing child searching for his mother. <laughs> After him, uh, many a damned soul carrying their own heads in hand. Then, those whose thoughts passed through me. Ah, a minister of God tormented by doubt. Hold on. A minister of God? Monseigneur de la Farre? A scholar with soul star-filled and a learned master of alchemy. Monsieur Bailly and Monsieur Lavoisier. A usurer who shed so many tears for his lady. Monsieur Necker mourning his wife. All bound to the anchor stone. <laughs> Wretched souls, their ascension to the heavens repelled. The anchor stone, monsieur. Lapis philosophorum. The philosopher's stone. I. Knave who took it for his own lately. No count is he but that of Christmas and perfidy. Cagliostro. Well met. The rope for this violet and I shall be avenged. The anchor stone keeps the travelers in this limbo and makes them masters of the Iron Titans. From the defunct springs the fire that burns inside these demons. <laughs> Lanterns of the dead. Witchcraft of the blackest sort. Terrible slaughter. You say I was just observing the massacres. I, vile, innumerable crimes. The devil's own cursed titans and their restless horde. They drinketh from the lake where the souls of the dead sleep. <laughs> Men and women offered in sacrifice to feed the pyre. Then the terrible moor was opened, and in flowed legion of the dead. Ne'er has I seen such and so many here. During all my stay, the stone is verily my dark confine. Lonely, so lonely that my vessel is no more, and my soul still clustered in this place. Alack, I do despair of ever ascending to heaven. Gentle dame, I pray thee, do shatter my stone. You want me to break the stone that contains your soul? Is that what you're asking me to do? I, my God, I beg thee! Do you know where this stone is? You've been buried for more than three centuries, monsieur. The precious jewel, sublime treasure, was inscribed in my legacy, my testament, my testament. On my tomb engraved, gentle dame, on the tomb! Encounter. I must tell Abbe Grigoire about it immediately.
Can I help you, Aegis? The plan worked as we had hoped. My spirit left my body, and I traveled to the in-between. This is extraordinary. It confirms all my theories. You were right about the rest, too. Nicholas Flamel's soul had never left the in-between. Mon Dieu, four centuries. What a fearsome fate. Were you able to speak with this unfortunate soul? Yes, mon père. He claimed that I had been in purgatory for a long time, but had never spoken until then. Please, go on. He said he had met other visitors. Based on his descriptions, he was speaking of Monsignor de la Fare, Minister Necker, Monsieur Bailly and Monsieur Lavoisier. They all seemed unaware of his presence. All bound to the anchor stone. Those were his words. All those whom Cagliostro turned into his homicidal playthings. Yes, it is just as I thought. The subject has the impression of being the automat it is bound to, but his soul remains in the in-between world. Mon père, Monsieur Flamel begged me to free him from purgatory. He has suffered for too long. How can we help him? If he is to be believed, we would simply have to break his stone. Of course, the philosopher's stone. The anchor stone that keeps him in the in-between. But where could it be after all this time? Look at this, mon père. These are philosopher's stones made by Cagliostro's hand. Do they look familiar? Heavens, they do. Ages. The ancient chalice of Saint-Jacques is adorned with a similar stone. It was entrusted to me by the parish priests, along with some other relics. I stored it in a reliquary chest in this very room. Here's the key. Go. Let us not waste a second more. Goodbye, mon père. Here it is. Four centuries, ages. Four centuries. No mind can begin to comprehend what this poor man has suffered. Is this the fate that awaits us? An eternity of silence and solitude? Purgatory is just a stop on the journey, Monseigneur. Oh, I would give anything to believe it again. Monsieur Flamel, the time has come to set you free. <sighs> And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. Hallelujah! Purgatory is not the end. Do you know what that means, Abbot? Before I say anything, I would like to take the time to consider the phenomenon we have just witnessed with a clear head. You are mistaken. What we have just seen and heard makes us new apostles. From this day on, I will live only to share the good news of this divine manifestation. That is all well and good, Monseigneur. Alas, I will not be able to join your apostolate, for there is no mission more vital than the one we are undertaking. At the moment when the tyrant aims to annihilate his subjects, I have a duty to put deeds before prayer. Goodbye. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye.